Welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle. This is another in the series of conversations between major arcana cards. And what I did was I, I laid them out and then I let them pair off however they wanted. And I've, I've been looking forward to this one. This is the fourth. We've had the Fool and the Emperor, uh, the Magician and Temperance, which was very interesting. Then the High Priestess and the Hermit. And now we have the Empress and the Star. And I've been using, or uh, again, a different deck has been coming out for each pair, right? To, to have the pairs out. And then that deck is the one that gives the advice. And I knew as I was contemplating doing this reading that the deck for the cards was going to be Boadicea's Tarot of Earthly Delights. Who else? For the Empress. For one thing, but also for the star. It's one of my favorite star cards. So here is the Empress. And how magnificent is she? Right? Her very being made out of and covered in these earthly delights. And this deck does not discriminate. You know, it doesn't decide that insects, for example, or you know, tentacled beings are not delightful. They are all delightful. And that is certainly how the Empress sees all of life, all, everything on Earth. I think even the man-made things. I mean, some things we can look at, you know, giant glass office towers and feel they're not very beautiful. But the Empress, she doesn't judge in that way. It's about the life that's in something rather than any outward appearance. And in this conversation, like the conversation between the priestess and the hermit, for example, was about different perspectives. But this one is about collaboration, about bringing the empress and the star together. So she, right, so her conversation begins. Interestingly, she is associated with Venus and therefore in astrology with Taurus and Libra. But she's coming out of the gate, not with earth or air, but fire. And this eight of fire, this eight of wands, this fast moving incoming energy. And not just that, but right below that, we have this other, more fire, the four of fire, and this really happy, joyous, um, play-filled scene. And then even this seven of fire, which is about learning to work with those things that you find difficult with shadowy things. And then also just because we have the tower and this fiery entity. And that, you know, this is an aspect of the Empress of Earth, this fiery uh, path of creation. That fire plays its part both figuratively as the inspiring force and then literally, uh, right? Your, your body is combusting. That's right, you need oxygen in your body because your body is a flame. And 
and then the queen of fire at the bottom. In case we weren't sure, in case we needed um, a little bit more, oh, and actually strength, and more fire, and this dragon. Oh, and then the wheel of fortune, but I'll stop there. And then we quiet down a little bit with this moon card. It's a gentle card. And this today is coming out as, right, as a really feeling card, right, and, and an embodied feeling card. Right, to feel, to feel the touch of spirit and of nature too, and of your own wider self, right? Here you, you know, here you are perhaps, uh, you may just be, you know, quiet in contemplation, or you may be feeling a little sad, or perhaps very sad. And there in the reflection in the water, in the moonlight is your wider self and right holding your hand so there is this this energy of love of emotion of compassion and of really feeling things allowing your feelings to to not just be up in your head but to flow through your body. And the seven of earth. And this is an energy of real satisfaction. And I've been considering this word lately. A friend of mine is interested in human design. And I'm not gonna like go down that rabbit hole. If you're interested, you should go look. But in my particular case, the way that I know that I'm on track is that I have a feeling of satisfaction. And so I've been thinking about what is, right, what does that feel like? What does satisfaction feel like? Everywhere, you know, how does it feel in the mind and in the, in the emotions and in the body? Right? And this feels very much like that. I'm thinking actually today, you know, sometimes these look like fruit and today they're looking very much like cacao beans <laughs> and chocolate. Right? And is that satisfying? You know, and everybody in here, right, seems to be satisfied. The, the, the fox is looking really satisfied and the snake is eating some of these fruits or beans and the woman is harvesting them. So really, you know, not, not feeling a sense of lack, but feeling a sense of fullness. Right? That's kind of what satisfaction feels like too, is a sense that one is full, that one has enough. And that there's always enough. And that what it is might change, you know, in, uh, in high summer, there might be, you know, lots of zucchini or tomatoes or peppers or corn. Um, and then in the fall, there might be apples and pears and root vegetables. And uh, in the winter, there might be, um, you know, different kinds of mushrooms and meats and nuts. And in the spring, then again, we have, you know, lettuces and uh, asparagus and um, you know, flowers on the trees. 
but there, right, that there is always something there. And that one can find satisfaction in all of it. And then interestingly, we get this elder of air that sits in the king slot in this jack. And I think this is this is clarity. You know, and she's she is here, right? She has roses at her feet. So standing standing in the roses, standing in the sensual, standing in the loving, standing in the beauty, and then allowing the mind, right, to work from there. Right, allowing the mind to flourish, to, you know, to have insight while standing in the roses. And it might actually be some practical advice. If you're confused, if you're perseverating about something, if you don't know what to do, to, right, to go and stand in the roses, whatever that is for you. It might be literally to go and stand in the garden and smell the flowers and feel the soil under your feet. But it might be to do something that feels like roses to you, to, to dance or to sing or to cook something or make something, right? That involves the sensual body. And then the hanged man. And this is coming through as surrender, as you know, full relaxation, just release. Just release. We walk around, I think, I certainly have experienced this, with a lot of tension in our bodies. And often we don't even know it. You know, do you, have you sort of stopped while you were doing something? and felt for the tension in your body or maybe in your face. I certainly know that I, when I do that, I find that I've tensed various muscles in my face or my jaw or um, in my shoulders, right? The Empress energy knows how to relax completely, right? Like you've seen those pictures or videos of cats sleeping and mad positions where they're sort of draped over a wall <laughs> or over some washing lines and they're just passed out completely relaxed because they know that their internal self that there is an internal self that is always vigilant that receives information from the outside world and can, you know, wake you up when you need to. You can move into the position for action. Contracting muscles, being ready to go. That you don't have to keep your actual mind, your conscious mind in this vigilant way or to keep your body tensed at all times. I mean, actually, if you watch someone like Bruce Lee, when he is, you know, even when he is preparing to spar with somebody, his, right, his body is active, but there is also a sense of relaxation. He isn't tensed up because then he isn't free to move in whatever way will be necessary. And this next row is so interesting. <laughs> I'm going to talk first about the card at the bottom, which is the Six of Wands. Right? All these things we've been talking about. Eating the grapes right out of the bunch. 
but then this row comes out with only two sort of very specific cards, which are the Empress herself, and this is, I think, my one of my other favorite Empress cards, and the red dress, the invocation, the dance. Right, that this is of significance, right, to be Empress, to be in the dance of life. And then the other cards, the card in the beginning, and then three others are all, right, this bird in flight. Um, so even, I feel like there is something, right, there's the cameo appearance, right, then we have everlasting light, the path, and welcome home. And they did like, come out in this order. But this image of flight, of lightness. Of, you know, what is it like to be a bird? To have that lightness within you of spirit and mind. Um, right under here, we have kind of the reverse spits. Well, we have the five of cups, right? And here the moon, moon is pouring out this red, this red fabric, right? Calling to this person who's kind of caught up in their spilled cups. And then below this, we have a repeat of the tower. And this time in a more ferocious kind of things falling apart way. And then we also have uh, waiting for the phone to ring. The Empress does not wait around for the phone to ring. <laughs> right, she is as ease with change. Right, as the tower. So to be, to be more fluid, to be more flexible, adaptable, right? Nature adapts to changing conditions. So the star. Isn't she fabulous? I love her. And one of the things I love best about her is that the, there's a star in her navel. And I want to say that, right, this is sort of the star. The star is not actually out there somewhere. We can, we can have representations of the star. There can be something that represents the star to you that you can kind of place out there as a focal point for yourself. But the actual star is within us, is part of us. So the knowing, right? The real knowing that is within us. And interestingly, again, the star is associated with Aquarius and therefore with air energy, um, with the containment of emotion, right, the water bearer. And something that astrologer Rick Levine points out is that you, um, right, that the nervous system, right, that your body needs water. Right, for signals, right, signals pass through your body, not through air, but through liquid, through the interstitial liquid, through the ocean that we all carry within us. 
So this electric kind of Aquarian energy, if we think about the Uranus aspect, right, needs that water. But the water is contained. Uh, it is a fixed sign. There is a sense, right, with Saturn that there, right, that there is this container. and that we can think about things. But the first card out is the Page of Pentacles. So being, right, being the student and also really knowing, kind of knowing what you want in the, in the physical. Having, right, having a foundation for yourself as well. And then right below that, we have death and transformation. So this is, again, this combination of Aquarius, of Saturn and Uranus. That there's, a, right, there's a, this electric, innovative, let's change stuff energy, but there's also a firm foundation that one can stand on. And then at the bottom of the deck is the Knight of Cups with this vessel of liquid of love. Uh, with right, the Holy Grail here on this channel. Then we have the emperor. More of this knowing what you want, of you know being sovereign about it, of uh, really deciding for yourself. This is what I want, and I'm I'm confident about that. I'm not confused about what it is that I want. I really know. And it may be like the things people around me want, or it may not. That doesn't matter. And then this Five of Cups, which is about current focus, right? We're not concerned about these bowls that have been spilled that don't have anything in them. We are concerned only with what is current now. This fish, this is our focus. Right, we're not gonna dwell in the past on things that were disappointing. That is not of interest really to Aquarian energy, which is very future focused or to the star. The star is not concerned with what didn't work. Page of Swords, more page energy, more student energy. To be open to inspiration, to be open to the call of Source or your own wider self, to allow new information to come in, uh, to allow for inspiration, uh, to you know, be open to the new idea. And then the lovers. What do you love? Do you move from fear or grippiness or uh, bitterness or um, hopelessness, despair, or any of these kinds of things? Is that what motivates you? Or are you motivated by love, by inspiration, by enthusiasm, by expansion, by your heart's desire? And then we have the bee. 
luck, industriousness, sweet victory. Um, and the B is this, right, this willingness to do the thing over and over again. Bees, you know, go out and they get pollen and they go back and forth and they do this repeatedly. So this industrious quality, this um, persistence quality of the star to do the thing over and over. There is also this multidimensional aspect of bees. And it's interesting actually that it's coming up because I'm gonna step away for a moment and bring a book that I got from the library yesterday. I didn't plan on it, it was just there on the shelf and I was really drawn to it and I picked it up. And it's what the bees know or what a bee knows. Um, so this is right, all about how, you know, it's sort of scientific research into bees, but really kind of into bees' internal lives, not just what bees do, but other aspects of the bee. I think it's a really loving exploration. And bees, I think, are really, they're multidimensional creatures. They're also communal creatures, many of them, not all, but, but mostly, right, communal creatures. And that's a, an Aquarius energy too. This ability, not just to, you know, kind of get along with people or work in a community, um, but to accept people's differences and to tap into the metaphysical aspect of that, right? The hive mind from a metaphysical spiritual perspective, that we are in touch with all of our fellow human beings and that we can receive information in that way. Um, I say this because the card underneath of the swan is transformation trusting the psychic gifts. And then actually we have birth, rebirth, oh, and disruption. With some Uranus coming in there, right? That, that the star may ask you to disrupt either your own life or other people's, right? This tower energy showing up repeatedly. That living in this way in this way of the Empress and the star may require upheaval and change. Um, at the bottom of the deck, love for the second time. Uh, love is incredibly important to both of these To both of these cards, to both of these archetypes. I actually, I write, I, do, I sort of don't want to call them that. I want to call them beings. Then we have trust, of course. <laughs> and then the spider, creative projects. And we again have this notion of being able to listen, right, to be in touch with the web of being, to feel, right, to feel the, the changes in the force, to feel the ripples, and to be able to act accordingly. And then the bard, music, poetry, myth, history, the enchantment of storytelling. Uh, that definitely feels, I mean, there's a Gemini quality to that, but also Aquarius. The telling of the new story. Aspects of things like music and words and poetry, how they affect the body. This is all, right? How do they affect the nervous system, the, the communication 
within your own body? How do you learn to really listen to these signals so that you can respond and not be overset? So then we add the, the two cards together and we start interestingly with the hermit. Close the door when you need to. It's your door. Your choices around how you conduct yourself, on how you respond to people. Really listening to all the messages, right, that the body brings, and also that come through this web that we're all in. And when you need to, you close the door. Below that is love for the third time. And here with these two uh, quite different beings of the lion and the girl, and also actually the right that their Leo is showing up here. The, the working with these two energies, working with the Empress and the star. How they work really well together. The bottom of the deck is the seven of fire coming out again. And this time in this really beautiful let's get going unicorn energy so we have the star finding it knowing it um really getting to know it embodying it getting your mind on side because that that is the trickiest thing, is the mind, is the nervous system. At least from my perspective, and I think that probably many of you would agree. It isn't really your body that's the trouble, even if you have difficulties there with, with chronic um, disturbances, perhaps. Right, the mind comes first. Change the mind's direction into the ace of fire and inspiration. And then you get to go in your, in your fiery chariot, right? So you kind of change from a, a, a very gentle sort of air travel kind of thing. Uh, but it's a little, I don't want to say that it's subdued, but it's, you know, blue is a nice, gentle, calm energy. And the chariot of fire kind of feeling, right? This feeling. And then six and six of wands, this feeling. that your star is guiding you to. Advice. Extra. The queen of fungi, the queen of pentacles, of course. <laughs> Who else? And right below her, Boadicea, the queen. Um, and I would, you know, but I to see a story is quite difficult and you could look at it from, you know, a couple of different perspectives, but in this moment, it's this sense of victory and this willingness to roll right into change, right? The call to of the tower, but below her, 
is the ten of pentacles, the ten of fungi in this, you know, really happy group scene. And actually, the knight of cups, knight of tentacles, and the lovers. Oh, and the moon. I'm just going to do one more. Oh, I have to do two more. The two of tentacles, two of cups, more love. And then the page of swords showing up again. And I really will stop there, although I think I could go several more. And then the bottom of the deck is the extra, one of two extra cards from this deck. One is Boansia, and the other is this perspicacious platypus. This is like knowing yourself for the fabulous creature that you are. Right? Go and look at yourself in the mirror and think, oh, so gorgeous. So gorgeous. I'm going to step right through this mirror, right? I'm in this kind of dull, dark room, and I'm going to step right through this mirror into this gorgeous garden. where this awesome, majestic, gorgeous self is living. Right? I mean, all of these, right? Coming together. <laughs> Everybody. So much gorgeousness at once. And then the fool. Ready to go. Just go. Third page, page of cups, page of tentacles. Getting really comfortable with the magic. Getting really comfortable with all of the emotions that may come through as you do this, take this path, work with the Empress and Star. Um, and the surprises, right? Strange little fish that might show up when, you, when you're not looking. And then the hermit again. You can always return to yourself you can always return to this space. To the space where it's just you and your soul. You and your soul, you and your wholeness, you are the final word, the final arbiter of everything. And you can always return to this space to receive this energy, the energy of your soul. Oh, so gorgeous, isn't it? I need a better word. Gorgeous, magnificent, beautiful, awesome, inspiring fabulous, luscious, decadent, delightful. Pleasurable. Arousing. Satisfying. So working with the Empress and the Star and allowing them to work with each other. Knowing, knowing what it is that you want, right? What's that star in your navel? And then moving into it and allowing it to manifest, taking inspired action when it comes up, basking in it, luxuriating in it,
I wish you all the best with this journey, this space, this evolution of yourself. And I will see you next time. So long.